All righty. Well, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, folks, wherever you're joining us today for another installation of the Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar series. Uh, my name is Alex Pena. I'll be moderating the session along with my uh, colleague, Naman Maisawala. Uh, and we have uh, the great return of the one and only Volker. Uh, as many folks have um, listened to his webinars from previous years, he is back to um, give us the new, new features in AutoCAD 2019. Um, I do want to apologize uh, ahead of time for folks who are wondering why we didn't present last week. Um, with the release of the 2019 um, coming this week, we wanted to kind of align our presentation with that. So here comes the new installation. Um, get right into the kind of our, our lovely faces for the folks that you're going to be hearing from today. Myself, Alex Pena, I'm a product support specialist from the Boston office. We have Volker, who's a product support specialist. And for those who are unfamiliar with Autodesk and our acronyms, he is the KDE or knowledge domain ex expert when it comes to AutoCAD. Um, he's out of the Lake Oswego office, um, soon to be Portland. And uh, Naman Marsawala, one of our Autodesk expert elites out of the Westchester, Ohio area. Um, Naman, you can find him all over the place um, providing solutions and usually as a regular on our um, webinar uh, series here. As always, um, before we get started, we'd like to let folks know, feel free to leave questions in the chat window. Myself and Naman will try to answer them as quickly as possible. Um, oftentimes, we'll try to supply links if there are articles that have been previously written. Um, this lets you get a quick direct link into the solution and um, something you can have for future reference. Um, the session will be recorded. Uh, it will be placed on our YouTube playlist um, if you're not following it yet. Highly recommend you do. Um, you have access to all the different uh, webinars we've presented over the years. Um, a lot of them as uh, Volker, who kind of piloted the program. You'll hear him um, all over them, uh, as well as myself. and a few of the different contributors on the AutoCAD team. Um, we will have uh, all the links available in the registration reminder, the post webinar survey, and the chat window. Um, as you will notice, there's a little image there that kind of shows you exactly what you should be looking for. Um, just to kind of give you folks uh, a, a couple more updates, uh, the next couple of uh, webinars that will be presented are the Learn AutoCAD in 50 Minutes. This one's usually a pretty popular webinar. Um, this, uh, we've done it for the last three years, I believe, and it's usually trying to let folks know different ways that they can become familiar and more efficient with the program. Um, after that, we'll have the uh, Dynamic Blocks webinar. This one is usually presented by uh, Victoria. I don't know if that's going to be her again this year, but um, uh, I can say that it will be another webinar that kind of builds on either the previous ones, so that way you can kind of have a, uh, understand all the features that go into the Dynamic Blocks and different ways you can manipulate them. But um, it will be something, another very interesting one. Um, as mentioned previously, you can always um, watch the webinars from the Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar playlist. Um, you can download the data sets. Uh, we'll usually try to supply the script, the PowerPoint that's going on here, and any sample drawings that are used um, or sample content. I know that um, Volker does have some content he, he's going to be sharing pretty soon or um, toward the end of the webinar. This will kind of let you folks uh, get right started in the program. Uh, as soon as the presentation is over. As always, we like to kind of get in here and uh, just um, supply some links on getting started, learning and exploring. Um, some folks, uh, this might be your first webinar. If it is, welcome. Um, for some that have been here uh, frequently before, you understand that these links kind of just lead you to different places in case you want to do troubleshooting, if you're getting a new machine and want to check out system requirements. We kind of recommend going through these any time that you're considering upgrading, especially with this um, new features of AutoCAD 2019 that we're kind of exploring today. A lot of times we get something that might have been compatible in previous versions, may not be compatible in the newer versions. Um, in some instances, something that you had previously is um, perfectly fine to carry through. Always good to be safe, base, better be safe than sorry when it comes to this. Um, we definitely recommend doing your due diligence on the hardware. That's, that's probably one of the, the bigger issues that come into technical support as we're kind of trying to mitigate them. Uh, before we continue on to the agenda and such, um, I'd always like to kind of throw out a poll here um, just to see, gauge the audience that we have today. And the first one is, is this your first Autodesk help webinar? And I'll let folks kind of uh, vote in. It seems we have about 70% of the folks have voted so far. Alrighty, as we close in on 90, I'll close this guy out and share the results. So it seems about 95% of you folks have been here before. 
Uh, welcome back. I guess we haven't scared you away. That's a good thing. Uh, for the 5% whose uh, this is your first webinar, welcome. And um, hopefully you do learn something new. You, you, do get, you do gain value from attending these. And I'm um, sharing with your colleagues and hopefully inspire other folks in your company to join as well. Um, there are great ways to, to learn these features about AutoCAD or something that you personally haven't gone through uh, in a while and probably want to get familiar with again. Um, as with all these new uh, uh, implementations of the program that are released yearly, there's always something that changes and something you can, um, you can learn along the way. I'll uh, throw out a couple more just to get a better idea of your environment. Um, which AutoCAD applications are, are you folks using? Um, this webinar today would be going into AutoCAD um, and AutoCAD LT 2019. Um, so for the for the Mac users, this won't necessarily uh, attend to you yet, but um, it is something good to know if you, if you are doing any type of cross-platform licensing where you're using AutoCAD for Mac or and AutoCAD for Windows. All righty, we'll close this guy out, share the results. So it seems about um, the, the entire audience is using AutoCAD for Windows and AutoCAD LT for Windows. So that's a uh, pretty good idea of, of what we're doing with here. And then I'll do one more uh, poll here. What is the current version of AutoCAD? Um, with this release, the 2019, um, we don't assume many folks are on there, but we want to see which one, who are on the latest and greatest, the 2018. Um, before this, uh, a lot of the times we recommend that folks try to keep up with it, especially with the new subscription licensing. You have features to updates that are regularly uh, released. and um, a lot of these updates uh, are targeted toward um, sometimes legacy issues, things that have been carried through multiple versions that just hadn't been able to be fixed. And a lot of them do um, make a pretty stable program. I know I personally love using the 2018 version um, and look forward to the 2019. Um, but it looks like here we'll uh, close the poll. It's about 95% of folks have voted. And 67% of us are on the latest and greatest. There are a few of us that are, uh, looks like in the previous versions of the program, um, earlier than 2016, it, it, this hopefully can kind of give you some, some type of uh, influence on, on migrating up to that newer version. Um, for the folks that are in 2018, maybe this is something that, that you consider as well. One thing to keep in mind, um, 2018 and 2019 will have the same drawing format. Uh, 2017 through anything uh, to 2013 will have the same drawing format. Just something with backward compatibility to keep in mind. Um, for the folks that don't know um, which version of the program you're on, you can always check by typing in about on the command line and hitting enter. Um, but that'll be it. And uh, what we'll do now is continue on through here and go over the agenda. So the new features that we want to kind of uh, get through for sure are the draw and compare, shared views, and then the AutoCAD specialized tool sets. One thing that Volker has mentioned to me is um, if, if time um, is available to us, he does want to go over a few different other features. Um, so hopefully we can kind of get through these, uh, understand how to fully functionally use them. And um, if all goes as well, we maybe get a, a few extra um, features included in the, the webinar. If not, we'll do our best to share that information through um, data sets and um, other in, uh, handouts that we can um, attach to this webinar so you folks are prepared with all the new features. Um, another thing to keep in mind is with the subscription licensing, there is a, a release plan, the 2019.1, which will include a bunch of new features as well. And um, I think Volker might touch on that a, a little bit um, later on in the webinar as well. So um, without further ado, the, the man, the myth, the legend, uh, Volker himself. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm recovering from that intro. All right. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Um, let me go ahead and get ready to um, show my screen here. And hopefully everybody can see it. Uh, yep, I can see it on my end. Okay. Well, and that's what matters. Actually, the audience matters. Hey, um, <laughs> good to be here. And hopefully... Um, um, Hopefully, I'll do Alex proud. <laughs> Certainly, uh, <laughs> never mind. Hey, let me uh, let me first of all talk about one one of the new features. It's it's not a biggie, but uh, it is in a sense. We've actually the the AutoCAD team received a lot of feedback on um, the interface itself, on on the icons, and 
And one of the things they've done is refresh the look of the icon. So uh, it, it's a subtle dip, difference, but it does make our icons stand out a little bit more. You know, here's a good one right here. Insert, create, create um, uh, the layer properties manager, just a little bit bigger, a little bit brighter uh, to make things stand out. So I'm using AutoCAD 2018 as a comparison. So um, and the, the, the same thing goes with um, our status bar icons. See if I can get that up there close enough. No, quite a bit. Um, whoops, didn't want to do that. All right. So no, just a little bit brighter, a little bit bolder. So uh, that should make some people happy. I know my, as I get older, my, <laughs> my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. So it is nice to see um, more detail as far as that goes. So. So having, uh, having said that, we, um, of course, are covering AutoCAD 2019, and um, I'm still working on the release candid candidate here, uh, the beta, but it uh, uh, just shows I'm not that special or anything. I, I still haven't had time, actually, to install the new release, but uh, the full version. But this is, uh, there's nothing different here. Uh, but in case you noticed that up there with the release candidate. So again, we have some additional icons here. Um, uh, some of the features they've added are um, access to web um, uh, versions of, um, well, lower end AutoCAD. Let's call it that, but allowing you to take AutoCAD and uh, work with it on the road or um, have your clients review files or even those you're working for review files for um, uh, as you work with your AutoCAD. And uh, we're going to discuss a couple of those features. But the first feature I want to talk about is a tool that if you've run AutoCAD architecture, uh, you may be familiar with it. Uh, new to AutoCAD is a tool called Drawing Compare. We can find this under, um, well, we can find it under the application menu uh, when no um, drawings are open. We can also find it under the collaborate, collaborate tab. And you can also type compare at the command prompt. So DWG compare, what it does, it, it compares two versions of uh, drawings. And I, I really wish I would have had this back in the day when I was drafting. Uh, it's a pretty slick little tool. Now, if, if I had had a drawing open right now, that drawing would be listed in this um, uh, drop-down list here of files. And uh, even if it were open, I could choose a different file by using my Browse button here to uh, find a drawing that I want to compare with a newer version or an older version. So uh, the colors here, we can... Uh, whoops. Did not need that. Windows 10, I love to hate it at times with the notifications. Anyway, um, we can change these colors here. By default, this was actually green uh, from my last session where I changed it to um, um, cyan. It, um, it um, stays that way, persistent, throughout my uh, sessions of AutoCAD. Uh, you know, whatever your preference is as far as um, colors go, you can change those. A little bit of flexibility there. Here we can choose from a MRU, or most recently used list of files. I'm going to go ahead and browse here and select my second file. And then, of course, we have the compare button here. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And what it does, it actually opens up both those files. It creates a new file, basically, and it inserts one drawing on top of the other. And if we were to select this here, you'd see it's treated as one object, a block. Now, we have some tools here to where we can change the draw order. And what's happening here is the color that I assigned. This is the first floor drawing. Red, of course, is the um, uh, version 2 drawing of the first floor. And then 
all the um, items in the drawings that are common to both files are uh, at a default gray right now. So um, it is showing me what the changes are compared to version one of the file. And I can modify this a little bit if I want to. I can, okay, well, look, I'm good. Let me just see the changes that were made in version two, uh, turning off the uh, layer for the version one drawing, doing the same version two here. So I have some flexibility as to how I want to view this. I can also turn off the common file here, uh, which is the gray. Another option we have here are the drawing information, which shows me um, where those drawings are located at and who last worked with them. In this case, I was they're both in the same folder, but if one of these were on a network location uh, and saved by Naman, well, it would have that information there, which is always, always good to know. Hey, who is the person who uh, messed up my design work? Naman. All right. Anyway. Um, we don't have any text in this drawing here, but what these are are filters uh, to, uh, I don't want to compare text, maybe I, uh, I'm not worried about notes at this time, um, and, and if you'll note right here, we also have this filter for hatches because that has been filtered out. It's not showing any hatches which may have been added or removed. Um, and in this case, they were common to both files but it allowed me to filter those out. What I really like about this is the revision cloud, how it works. By default, it is encompassing the entire area where changes were made. And what I can do is I can toggle this from a rectangular to a polygonal cloud. And if I want to, I can even define that a little bit more by changing the margin on the on the cloud. So I can expand that a little bit more because maybe I don't need to be that granular or maybe I, I do want to close that in real tight like. Um, we have a little bit of flexibility there. And we can also turn off the revision cloud if necessary. This is a neat tool. It allows me to zoom into the areas that were changed. So um, by going and clicking on this, it takes me to the first change set, which is that top revision cloud, second area, third area, and so forth. So uh, a real nice little tool here to allow me to compare the differences in the files. Now, um, uh, I mean, that's basically it, but what we can do at this stage here is because this has created a, a new drawing file, um, I'm going to go ahead and save it. Uh, I may want to keep it like this for whatever purpose. And now it is its own drawing file. Again, this is a block right now, so if I wanted to make modifications in this, um, uh, I mean, for all intents and purposes, I, I probably wouldn't. I'd, continue to work in version two, but who knows, maybe I need to. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the explode command and, and you'll see we just have regular drawing entities here. So that is the uh, DWG compare tool, which, um, which by the way, the um, topics I'm covering here, they're available in both AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. So um, uh, this is all available in both of those applications. And of course the, the verticals based on that software as well. So the second tool that I'd like to uh, show you is a tool called Shared Views. In AutoCAD 2018 they um, introduced a Design Online. Boy, my memory's getting bad. Design online. So this is an enhancement to that. And what it offers you is a way to share the data without actually sharing it. So um, you're, you would upload this to, a, um, um, uh, to the web and then send a link to somebody and they could 
view the file, but they can't print it, they can't um, uh, export it. I mean, they could print it from a browser perhaps, but they can mark it up, annotate it, leave notes. They can check it for accuracy uh, to some extent and leave comments for you that you would then um, uh, be able to work with after the fact. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up uh, a drawing file here which is probably a good thing since I need that to work with. And uh, it's just a standard drawing. I think I actually used it for, um, whoops, for our uh, 2018 or 17 webinar. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and click on Shared Views right now. And let's bring up this palette here. And you could have multiple drawings that you've sent out uh, to be reviewed by others and they would all be shown here as bitmaps and of course we're going to go ahead and just click on a new shared view which brings up this dialog. Here I can um, dictate what of this drawing I want to um, share. I, I just need them to see this particular layout um, or I want them to see all the layouts uh, or only 2D views or uh, and I may not want to share object properties. In this case, I'll, I'll leave that on. Um, but um, I, can, I can be a little bit specific about what I want to share. And once I do that, uh, we do get this message saying it's going to process this in the background, which um, uh, to me is a good feature because depending on your network or uh, even on the server side, sometimes it may take longer, the drawing file size will di dictate how long it takes to um, generate this. Uh, but basically, like the publish command, it is publishing the shared view. And in my lower right-hand corner, there's a little uh, icon with a bubble as I hover over it, which uh, tells me that the publishing is in progress. And as soon as it's done, it's going to go ahead and notify me, hey, we're done. I'm going to go ahead and click on the hyperlink here to view this in my browser. And this doesn't take that long at all. Now there are different options available here. For example, uh, just by default I can switch between uh, the, the views that I have. Okay, so there's the model drawing here are my layouts. I can also sh show this in a um, in an icon view or, or thumbnail view, so I can easily switch between uh, the different layouts in the drawing. As far as manipulation goes, um, I can dictate which layers I want on or off in the drawing, so I don't need to see the windows maybe. Uh, stairs, whatever, rocks, all of these. Um, it allows me to be very flexible as far as what I can see. And I can also filter out those layers uh, easily in the filter field. Uh, properties. So by properties here, right now nothing is selected. Go ahead and, oops, I need to go to model. No, no, this is good enough. Um, Here's where it shows our properties. Now these are these are read-only properties. We can't modify these. Um, again, this is a viewing and markup package. It's not intended um, for the uh, person receiving a link to this uh, to to be able to modify it. So, uh, but it does give me the information I would need as far as um, reviewing the work that I hired somebody to do. In our settings here, we can, um, and I have my mouse reversed, uh, but basically we can change the um, mouse direction. Uh, by default, it goes backwards from what I prepare. If we um, don't, um, if we want, we can have it open up the properties palette as soon as we select an object, or even set this up to a left-handed mouse setup. We also have options for performance here. 
here we can leave comments, which we'll go ahead and leave a, um, um, I'm not signed in, of course not. Sign in real quick. And there we go. Don't need that. So with the comments here, I can quickly add a comment and and this is so cool. Yep. All right. Um, with the capital L, of course. Anyway, I'll go ahead and post this. And we'll see where that shows up a little later here. Now, by print, it's going to go ahead and print this using whatever printer I choose. Okay. Uh, so in this case, I could send uh, print this for myself as an extra, uh, as, a, extra as a PDF. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of the print. We can also do a screen capture if we choose instead of a, um, uh, a print. We can also share the link with someone else in order for them to review the file. Now, at the bottom of this, you'll notice we have some tools available to us. And uh, those tools, one is a Zoom Extents, then Pan is enabled, our Zoom tool, but we also have a Measure tool here. And the Measure tool, will allow me to snap from point A to point B and gives me a measurement of that area. Uh, we have angle tools available to us. And make sure I could zoom in closer if I weren't so lazy. And let's just go ahead and do that. So it gives me our angle here. Uh, we can get the area. Um, Calibrate, actually that's new. They've thrown that in since I last used this, so I'm not going to go over it uh, because I'm not sure what it does. And, of course, we can change our units here as well as the precision for those measuring tools. So, nice little feature there. Uh, in this case here, though, I'm going to go ahead and say I'm done. And we have another nice little button here which allows me to add some markups to the drawing. Now, Right now I'm in pencil mode, so um, my penmanship is so good. <laughs> um, yeah, there we go. So I'm um, not going to go any further than that. I'm going to hit escape, go into the arrow tool, which allows me to go ahead and place an arrow there. I can put a cloud around an area. Text tool, we have that available as well. Um, as far as the text tool goes, it would allow me to change the size. Uh, it's kind of minimal here. We have three different options for size. I'll go ahead and change the size here just And if we have to, we can undo things. We also have a color swatch here where we can change the color of the text. Once I'm done with that, any markups, and these are pretty rotten markups, but they're for demo purposes only. We don't want to try this at the job. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and click um, Save here, which updates the view. Returning to AutoCAD, I'm going to refresh, and I can see that some comments were added to that file. And I can work based on that. This will quickly allow, allow me to go to the viewer to uh, examine all that in further detail. Oops. Yeah. And I did not do that properly. Awkward moment. But, um, yeah, so that is the viewer. And again, this is intended for viewing and markup, um, being able to share data without having to um, send the drawing file out. And a lot of people are particular about that, sending out that sensitive data. So, anyway, so that's a um, 
new and enhanced feature. And by the way, we can go ahead and copy links from here or delete these views as well. Uh, by default, these views are available to whoever you sent the link to for 30 days, but that time limit can be extended here. All right. So that is um, the DWG viewer. Another enhancement that they've made, you're probably familiar with, the, um, we had the AutoCAD 360, and we had AutoCAD WS, uh, a couple of different online AutoCAD apps. Um, we, uh, with um, this release of AutoCAD, uh, the AutoCAD Web and AutoCAD Mobile are part of the subscription package um, for our subscribers. And they've made some really nice enhancements to the web-based AutoCAD. Let me go ahead and um, open up that drawing again. And... I'm going to go ahead and save this to my web browser. And basically, my old 360 files are all right here from AutoCAD 360. And I can quickly save this to that location. I can also open up files from the web. And that's actually the same drawing file that I saved earlier. Now AutoCAD Web, I've already opened it up in a browser here. It just went live this morning. Yeah, and I'm actually in the beta web, that's why I have that message. Um, this is what we see here, and, and again, I've got my um, old 360 files plus some samples plus other stuff that was up, uploaded at one time or another. Uh, the big difference, uh, if you've gone to AutoCAD 360, uh, I used to always say beta here. It does not anymore. If you are a subscriber, um, you have the ability to create a drawing um, or open up an existing drawing that you may have uploaded. I'm going to start with this, and I'll backtrack out of it in a moment. Uh, and by creating a new drawing here, I'll just, um, you may have noticed other trashy examples that I had listed there. I'm going to go ahead and just continue with that theme. We can, uh, by default, it does assume metric units, but we can easily switch to imperial. And once I click create, yeah. Uh, I don't have it being the beta. I was hoping I was going to be able to show this to you. Let's try this. Maybe I can get an app unavailable. <sighs> okay, well, that was a bad idea. Um, and that's because I am still working in this. I don't have the, um, the uh, new web location on my browser here, and I don't want to struggle with getting into it. I would encourage you to... Uh, check this out. I'm going to be throwing up a preview guide in a few moments. And, um, uh, you know, unfortunately this worked before the webinar, uh, but they must have just taken it down. Um, uh, the preview guide does talk about the AutoCAD web and its functionality. It is a, uh, one thing I'd like you to remember, it's not AutoCAD. It's not meant to be that, but it does allow you to draw, modify the file, uh, save it to the hard drive, add text, um, had uh, measurements, uh, pretty cool application. Maybe we can do a webinar on that once we have, uh, I have a uh, up and running link. I do, however, want to touch on a couple other things in AutoCAD. That is looking it's called a awkward moment. It is an awkward moment. Yes, I am uh, red in the face right now. Yes, and uh, thank you, Naman. My our nemesis. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, um, graphics config. Improvements have been made to this as well. 
and primarily on the 2D side. Okay, and they've been throwing a lot of stuff out on the 3D side, but on the 2D side, uh, we have now have three different modes. And depending on what um, hardware, what graphics card you have installed, uh, depending on um, the XML file from our certified uh, uh, driver base and what version of DirectX you're running, uh, you, your um, AutoCAD graphics performance utility will default to whatever is assumed is best for those particular settings. You can tweak these. Um, with some cards, you're not going to be able to tweak all the settings. But um, here, with this advanced mode, I can certainly enable or disable a lot of uh, functionality. Um, right now, with advanced mode, I can click on details. And here's some additional settings, which I can modify. We can go ahead and modify the caching level for the graphics card, which allows us to increase the amount of memory that is being used to render um, our display. Or we can uncheck these. Now, advanced, uh, this is recommended for high-end graphic cards that in include a um, significant amount of memory and processing capabilities, OK? Uh, so um, oh, look at that verbiage right there. I was reading right off of that. Intermediate mode uh, here, well, basically intermediate or mid-level cards. And you'll see that uh, some functionality is enabled, some disabled. Um, uh, in this case here, not too much just because of my graphics card that I have installed. Uh, but options are going to vary. And then we have a lowest setting for lower, or uh, it's a basic mode. Uh, and right away, it disables smooth line display and high quality geometry um, and does not cache any memory. Uh, so depending on your card, you're going to have different settings available, but this should improve performance and allow you to tweak performance a lot uh, um, more precisely. And the documentation in the help file is pretty um, complete uh, to where you can find more information about these utilities. So um, you should make a lot of end users happy uh, with their graphic cards. So oh, that's a pretty cool feature. I like I like the changes they made there. Going back to the web, um, for the AutoCAD users on subscription out there, and this is AutoCAD, not um, AutoCAD LT, so sorry. Um, but they do have what are now called specialized tool sets available. And basically, uh, with this subscription, and I'm not trying to be marketing here. I just think this is a pretty groovy idea. Um, with the AutoCAD 2019 tool sets, specialized tool sets, you not only have the ability to install AutoCAD, but available to you now is AutoCAD Architecture, Mechanical, AutoCAD Electrical, AutoCAD MEP, Plant 3D, Map 3D, and Raster Design. And you can, you can install all of those or one of those. They, they're still standalone, separate, you know, standalone separate uh, installs. Um, but depending on your needs, you can install, uninstall, uh, install them all, install just the one you need. Um, it all comes with the AutoCAD subscription. And um, me not being a sales geek, I don't know anything about pricing. You know, check with your subscription, uh, whoever you got your subscription from. Uh, check with your reseller uh, to see how this all works as far as that goes. Uh, personally, first thing I would do is install Map3D just for the, for the cleanup tools and the ability to use ADE, uh, all very cool stuff. Along with that, we get the AutoCAD web and mobile apps. And trust me, the web app is a nice 
app. Um, I've loved playing with it. I mean, there are limitations, but uh, it is continually evolving, evolving. And then, of course, we have uh, AutoCAD Mobile for your tablets to work with. So a lot of good stuff here. Um, one more thing I'd like to go over real quick. I like to point this out all the time. The first thing I do, um, more so when it, back when I was a drafter or in CAD management, when a new release came out, I would take a look to see, hey, what are the new commands, new system variables, what's been changed as far uh, as those commands and variables go? Because um, if, if you are kind of geeky about it, you want to know what's going on, um, it would be get best to um, uh, kind of check this out. You know, for example, these are updated commands and system variables, and uh, changes were made, and they may not work the way you um, last expected them to. Uh, and, of course, uh, some commands have been removed, or system variables have been removed. So do check those out. Now, um, this AutoCAD 2009 preview guide link actually takes you to the page where we were in a moment uh, a moment ago and what I would like to do right now is instead of just revisiting that page let me go ahead and for that and I'm going to throw a handout here which um, oh I'm going to do that for what I minimize that for right um, I'm going to throw the uh, preview gu guide in here for you to um, grab if you want to download that. Um, I'd encourage you to go check out that site, uh, but uh, that preview guide does cover all the new features that were introduced in this release, as well as the 2018.1 update. It does discuss all the tool sets that are available to you, and I, I really think you'll like that. So, um, yeah, because of my debacle with the AutoCAD web, um, that's about it for me today. Um, subtle features I think you'll find in that preview guide that will help you out. And let's do a little Q&A or see what we have here. I'll pass it back to you, Alex. Alrighty, thank you for that, Volker. Um, so just looking through the, the chat here, see if we have any questions so far. It doesn't seem like um, anyone submitted anything. If anyone does have um, some questions they'd like to for us or Volker to cover specifically, feel free to kind of throw them into the chat now. Um, any type of uh, questions on enhancements or something not related to the topic, if you did have something in mind, we can definitely try to answer some on the spot here for you. Okay. It does not look like uh, the folks <laughs> have any questions at the moment. Can you cover like where the uh, hand a preview guide is because uh, we just started using this uh, handout feature? Oh, okay. Um, that didn't show up for you in your. Um... It did for me, but just I wanted to let people know that it is there. And you know, I'm I'm so technologically challenged um, that on my interface here, I don't even. Note where it's at. So on your dashboard, there should be a um, icon there for the handout. Is that where you have yours, Amon? Yes. Yeah. Um, so there on the dashboard, there should be an icon there or a field there for um, handouts. As the viewer, I'm I'm looking at a completely di different dashboard. So, um, but hey, let me show you where it is on the web in case you don't see where the handout is on that dashboard. And I do apologize. Um, like I said, I'm I can be a little challenged as well. 
um, oh yeah, all the way at the bottom. Sorry, didn't make you want to make you dizzy, but if you go to that AutoCAD blog, so blogs.autodesk.com, this is called the AutoCAD blog, and here you can download that entire 2019 preview guide, which I put in the handout section. Again, blogs.autodesk.com, AutoCAD. Okay, let's see what other questions we have here. Anything else that you see there? Um, uh, I'm not seeing anything here at the moment. Uh, it doesn't seem like anyone else has answered any questions. Okay, well, I don't want to waste anybody's time. I know we're all real busy. Um, uh, do check out the handout. I'd also check out just this AutoCAD blog page, uh, if anything, because it does um, cover those features as well, uh, not as detailed as the preview guide, um, but uh, there are links there. If I can get back to the top, yeah, here we go. Uh, you have more information on those tool sets as well as um, information about your subscription and the AutoCAD 2019 specialized tool sets subscription. You can also download a trial of AutoCAD 2019. So um, yeah, make sure to check out the resources available about this release and those tool sets. Alrighty, well thank you for joining us today folks. As always, you can expect to see this uh, webinar posted on our YouTube playlist. Um, we also work on getting you folks out a script and um, other information in regards to the webinar so you have that readily available with the, uh, the blog and um, the preview page as well. Have a good one. Awesome, thank you.